In today's video, we're going to break down the differences between two absolutely incredible breeds, the German Shepherd and the Akita. Welcome back to the Femre German Shepherd Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FemreCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to teaching you everything you could ever want to know about the incredible German Shepherd, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect German Shepherd companions. So if you love the German Shepherd as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell and you'll never miss a future German Shepherd video. And today we're going to take a look at what really separates the German Shepherd from the amazing Akita. Both are powerful guardians and protectors, but in this video we're going to really dive into the differences and similarities between these fascinating breeds. And let us begin with the history of the German Shepherd, whose ancestors have been working together closely with their sheep herder owners for thousands of years. In the late 19th century, the father of the German Shepherd, Max von Stefnitz, set out to create the ultimate sheep herding dog. He focused on strong, sturdy and yet agile dogs of wolf-like appearance who could trot for hours directing and protecting their flock. But soon it became apparent that this new breed could do much more than just just herd sheep and today Germany's most popular dog is used in many disciplines personal protection canine sports police service and of course still sheep herding and whilst the Akita of ancient Japan was also used as a guardian, these dogs were predominantly hunters. Their task was to assist Japanese noblemen in the pursuit of large game, such as bear and wild boar. Bred for agility and endurance, these courageous dogs tracked down the animals, flushed them out and kept them in check until the hunter's arrival. Now today, Akitas have become popular worldwide for their loyalty and their excellent guarding skills. So what about their difference in looks? Well, German Shepherds come in a variety of colour, shades and colours. Purely black, black and tan, black and silver, red and black, as well as grey and sable. Breed standards differentiate between short stock coats and long stock coats. In body shape, German Shepherds are slightly longer than tall, with the line of their back slightly sloping down from shoulder to hip. In size, their ideal is around 63 centimetres for male, a little bit shorter for females. That's about 25 inches, by the way. Uh, deviations of up to around an inch, either above or below the ideal height, are permissible according to breed standards. Now, larger than the average German Shepherd, Akitas are dogs of the Spitz type, who strongly resemble sled dogs bred uh, such as Huskies or Malamutes. Whilst the American Akita is slightly taller and heavier than the original Japanese Akita, both types have a beautiful thick and plush double coats. In colour, these luxurious coats can be red, brindle, fawn or white for the Japanese Akita. The American Akita's breed standards do not impose restrictions on their coat colours. Now, adult male Japanese Akitas stand up to 70 centimetres tall, which is around 28 inches, and weigh around 50 kilos or around 110 pounds, with the females again being slightly smaller and lighter. They have small erect ears and their curly brush tails. In their overall appearance, both Akitas and German Shepherds are well proportioned and show the promise of immense strength and agility. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before. It's the program that as a canine behaviorist, I use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that I work with to high levels of success. It is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. So then, intelligence and trainability differences. Well, the German Shepherd is known for its incredible intelligence and versatility, which makes it an ideal sports dog, personal protection dog, and service dog. German Shepherds are an absolute dream to work with. 
the best in the world, apart from perhaps maybe the Belgian Malinois, that there is not an easier breed to train on the planet and a breed that is more eager to please their handler. As they are extremely quick learners and dependable workers, German Shepherds can be a good choice for lesser experienced handlers when compared to the Akita. And whilst the Akita is no less intelligent, this dog will not obey a command simply because that command is given. The tendency for making their own decisions can be explained by their past as hunters in ancient Japan. Working in packs, these fearless dogs had to take on large, dangerous game without any help or guidance from their owners. On the contrary, the hunters had to rely on the dogs to find the game for them and then to keep it in check until they'd got to the scene. That said, training an Akita to decent levels of obedience and manners is possible. It just requires considerably more experience and skill than potentially training a German Shepherd would. Okay then, so what about the temperament differences? Well, both breeds can make good family dogs when raised in a home environment and when provided with the leadership of an experienced owner who takes training and socialization very seriously. Otherwise, these large dogs can become aggressive towards strangers. As an added challenge, the Akita is very prone to dog-to-dog -to -dog aggression. Now, Akitas are very clean and quiet dogs who groom themselves more like cats and they make remarkably good house dogs. German Shepherds, on the other hand, are less suited for an indoor lifestyle simply because of their extremely keen working drive. This breed is immensely alert at all times. Neither breed is the best choice for families with very small children, and German Shepherds can injure small kids just due to their boisterous nature and abrupt movements. And Akitas do not appreciate having children suddenly jumping on them or hugging them. And from my experience as a canine behaviourist, this is where I often see the, the beginnings of disasters happening in those circumstances. Now, when it comes to their protective instincts, however, both of these breeds are superb. They are equally effective as natural guardians who do not require training to defend their own. In a worst case scenario, the German Shepherd, especially when trained, is far easier to control than the Akita. Getting an Akita to let go of a person once it has made the decision to attack them is no easy feat. Now, when it comes to open displays of affection to their owners, the Akita is probably superior to the German Shepherd. Uh, aloof and cat-like in their character, as these regal Japanese guardians might be, they do still love a really good cuddle with their owners. So then, what about exercise and grooming differences? Well, German Shepherds are notorious shedders all year round and should be brushed thoroughly every day and multiple times a day potentially during shedding season where it gets really bad. The long-coated version of the German Shepherd requires even more brushing for their coats to stay clean and tidy. Akitas, on the other hand, do not shed. Instead, they blow their coats, which basically means they lose their entire coats in one go. That is why brushing them once or twice a week is quite sufficient. A pin brush, paddle brush, as well as a comb with wide set teeth are the best tools to use for the rich coat of these glorious dogs. Now, in terms of exercise requirements, both breeds need to run and play a lot. At least one extended run off leash per day is a must with those canine athletes. Being working breeds, these dogs can spend hours out and about walking, running, doing obedience work and playing. One great way to satisfy their need for movement is to teach them to run alongside you or to run alongside a bicycle. So I hope you enjoyed this quick breakdown of these two absolutely glorious breeds that share a lot in common, yet do differ quite significantly in other ways as well. If you did enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up button and remember to subscribe. We've got two dedicated German Shepherd videos coming to this channel every single week and I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir German Shepherd Show.